Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you today? How's life in your world? How's things where you are? I hope it's fantastic and wonderful. It is freezing in here because it was in the negatives last night. So very, very cold, but uh, I received an early birthday present. Uh, well, in fact, I received two, but we're going to talk about this one first because this is something I've wanted for a while, and it's a sword. I'm sure you saw that from the title. M got me a sword. Now, this isn't just any sword. This is a very special sword because this uh, is something I've wanted for a very, very, very long time, 20-something uh, years now, but I never had the means to get it myself. Um, I, I just, just you know, it, it's a very expensive piece. Uh, but I've told him about it over the years, so this is something I've always wanted. Someday I'll have one, I'll make a plaque for it, and I'll hang it. And uh, she decided that this was the year I needed to own it, so she bought it for me. And it is the Marine Corps NCO sword, non-commissioned officer sword. It is, this is like an official uh, uniform ready sword. And what I mean by that is there's replicas, there's, there's a, there are a few manufacturers of these, but in order for it to be considered, like, dress worthy, you could go wear this as part of a uniform, it has to meet a whole bunch of qualifications, this one does, this is, a, like, this is the sword, right, if you were to go get one. Um, it's an absolutely gorgeous sword, and um, it's a completely ceremonial piece, this is a very, very dull blade. Uh, the point is sharp enough that you could stab somebody with it, but the blade itself is, you know, an eighth inch across. It's completely dull. Uh, it's stainless steel with, you know, uh, cast brass that's been 24 karat gold plated. The scabbard is um, a mild steel core wrapped in leather, again with brass and uh, 24 karat gold. And she went through a lot of trouble to get this for me uh, because... By uniform standards, this needs to be a certain length. And basically the idea is if you're standing at rest with this, which is, I don't even really know the procedure, but it's something like this, the tip of the sword needs to be eye level, right? So there's a whole bunch of different lengths, and she went through this whole process to get me this sword. She contacted friends of hers who were in the Marines. Um, they, you know, explained to her the whole situation. She went out of her way to measure me. And, like, we we had this weird day where she was asking me a bunch of questions. Like, you know, how you know how tall are you? Can I measure you? I want to see how tall you are. And she put me up against a wall and she measures me. But then she makes some other marks. And I'm like, are you buying me a suit or something? Like, what is happening here? I didn't quite understand what the process, what she was doing. Um, and you know, the fact of the matter is, when I have wanted to own this... Uh, I would not have put forth the effort that she put forth, right? She really went above and beyond to try to get me the correct sword for me. And I was just going to buy one of the, like, $200 replicas. This is significantly more than that for the real deal sword. Um, but this is very special to me because I earned this in the Marine Corps. Um, I became a non-commissioned officer before I got out of the Marine Corps, which, if you don't know, there's basically... There's two ish there are enlisted people and then there are officers or commissioned officers uh, commissioned officers are people who went to college before joining the military they are the bosses they are the you know the officers um, enlisted are non-college you know people you can become a warrant officer as an enlisted person which um, which is kind of a bridge between like it's somebody who has gone on and been educated, or even there are some cases of like wartime promotions to a warrant officer because an officer was needed to, in a position. Um, but um, I was enlisted, and you at, at rank E4, which in the Marine Corps is a corporal, you become what is called a non commissioned officer. So, as a corporal, I had people underneath of me, I became a boss of enlisted people, right. Um, and so I had a small group of people that, that I was able to, uh, I guess command, that's not really true. Like 
for me personally, it's not really true, but that is how it works. Like there's a hierarchy and it's very strict. And so, uh, you know, the corporal is in charge of his, his squad. Usually, um, the corporal is a squad leader or, is, you know, and, and they tell their squad what to do and their squad does it right. But he gets his commands from somebody else. He's not making this stuff up. Um, and so starting at that E4 rank, starting at the corporal, you are allowed to wear the NCO sword as part of your uh, dress uniforms. Now, in the Marine Corps, um, uniforms are not provided. You have to purchase your own, which is, uh, I believe, unique to the Marine Corps. I might be wrong. There might be other uniforms that are, um, that are, or my other branches that uh, that require people to purchase some things, but for the most part, from what I understand, all the other branches provide uniforms, and the Marine Corps you don't. You, you have to buy your own. And so this sword, if you want it in, to, you know, as part of your uniform, you got to buy it. You have to. Like they're not going to give you one unless you have like a an officer or something that that gifts you one because you've been an amazing soldier or whatever. Um, and this is typically worn with, uh, if you've seen the commercials, the dress blues. Now, I don't have dress blues because, again, they're expensive. I never bought them. But this was a display case that my Master Gunnery Sergeant made me when I got um, when I was leaving the Marine Corps. And I don't know what happened to the plaque. I have to find it. But this is that dress blue uniform you might be familiar with, with medals and stuff. This is our K-Bar, which is the, um, uh, the official uh, issued knife of the marines and it, it i don't know if you can see it on camera but this is the corporal patch this is i earned this but there's two lance corporal pins in here because when he made this i was a lance corporal he made this um master, master gunnery sergeant medina was his name um he was a woodworker and he made that uh, in preparation for me leaving, in preparation for, for my, um, my exit from the, from service. And at the time I was a Lance Corporal. I didn't become a corporal until my last like few months. I, I think it was about six months, but it might even been less time than that, that I wasn't actually a corporal. So it, it, for me, purchasing this sword was a huge expense that I didn't need to do. And I was young and really bad with money. Like, I had gotten myself into serious debt uh, a couple of times, and I could not afford to spend money on something like this if it wasn't going to be put to use, and it wasn't. I didn't own my dress blues. You can wear this with the alphas, which are the green uniform that maybe you have seen uh, Marines wear, but um, it's really, it's it's such a ceremonial piece, it's really only ever used if you go to, like, say, uh, the Marine Corps ball or something like that, or, or on like very official parade duty kind of things, uh, it, this would be something that you could wear. Um, so I just never bought it. And it's been something I've wanted all this time. Just I wanted to have one because I earned it, because I'm proud of the fact that I earned it. I thought it would be a neat piece to have, you know, hanging in my house to say, look at that, you know, that is the oldest issued weapon in the United States military, from what I understand. Um, and it's mine, and I earned it. I have the, I had, I <laughs> don't currently, I had the right to carry this thing. Um, yeah, so she went way out of her way to do this for me, and it, it feels remarkable. Um, so it's really early, you know, my birthday's next month, don't worry, if you want to get me something, I'll, I'll give you an advance warning. <laughs> but, um, I just, when I got it, she, she wanted to wait, but she said, I need you to open it because I need to make sure it's the correct size and whatnot. And I said, okay. I knew what it was when I saw the box because I had mentioned it a few times and I said, oh, I think I know what that is. It's not a tool because it was in a, you know, tall, long box or whatever. I said, I think they know what that is. And she said, I want you to open it so I know that it fits. And then I, then I learned that she went through this whole process to try to figure out what size to buy for me to make sure she was getting the right thing. And, um. She nailed it. It was pretty great. So I did get another present, though, just to let you know. Whoever sent this, it came directly from uh, Wood River in the in the original packaging. It wasn't in, like, an Amazon box or anything. This was like a drop ship. So somebody ordered this for me. Thank you, whoever that was. This is the trash can lid I was talking about putting on my dust collector. So uh, 
I went ahead and ordered the extra hose that I need to make that fit and I'll get a trash can and maybe we'll do a little quick video on it when I put it together. Thank you for whoever ordered that for me. Thank you to M for buying me this amazing display piece. I now have to make a case. I want to make a display case that holds the scabbard and the sword and um, hang it up somewhere upstairs and it'll probably be made out of some of this cherry that I have left over from this project. We shall see. So that's what I have for you today. Thank you for being here as always. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, being amazing friends and wonderful people. I really appreciate you. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Today's word you should know to sound smart is knavish. It's an adjective meaning untrustworthy, dishonest, and mischievous. Despite or perhaps because of his knavish behavior, Jonathan is always a success at our society balls. Knavish. K-N-A-V-I-S-H. I think that was me. I think I was the knavish one. Uh, in fact, if you, if you had read, if I could find the plaque... There was a little, there was a little brass plaque that was on this that said something about my time in the Marine Corps, and it was like, let's be honest, you were just a civilian in camis, because I was always kind of the, I don't want to say I was the screw up, but I was, I wasn't a model Marine. 